So I actually am fairly new to the Kirby series. I had played a couple of games in the past, was never too impressed by it. Of course, the ones I tried mm, probably were not the greatest. Oh, recently I just said screw it and decided to play through the entire series from start to finish. So, my opinion on the series has changed somewhat. And when I oh, and when I say start to finish, I mean like everything except for one game which I will explain in a minute. So, as a newcomer to the series, thought I'd give my rankings and thoughts on these games, as most people who do these are probably longtime fans, so I won't have any nostalgia goggles, quote unquote. And while I certainly have my own personal biases, I'll try to keep it from being blinding, I guess. Anyways, the first game I had actually played was, I think, was the golf one. Yeah, that's... That wasn't the greatest experience, but the true proper one, I think, was Kirby's Adventures. But, we'll go with these in order. So, the first one, Kirby's Dream Land. Yeah, it's a basic game, and it's really short. You can't, There's not even copy abilities, but I honestly kind of had fun with this one. I would love to rank it higher, but again, because it's so short, I really can't justify putting it above, like, top C. Maybe, maybe the very bottom of B, but I think Top C is a good place for it. Again, I had fun with it, but... Mm, five freaking levels, and like, four of the five have been remade in Superstar. And when that has co I'm pretty sure that one has copy abilities. Anyways, next was the... I, this is the first proper game wide, it's Kirby's Adventures. I really did not think too much of this one when I played it. And this is also why I never really got into the series. It's okay, but the NES version especially is just not that great. It looks bad, it has frame rate issues, and while it did kind of like get the copy abilities and other systems that were found in newer games, it just didn't do them that well. So I would also put that one in a C tier, but definitely under Dreamland. And that one's also been completely replaced. Which we'll get into in a second. Next one is Kirby's Pinball Land. Pinball games have been really iffy for me. Like, I like going and playing physical pinball, but electronic pinball just isn't the same. Now, there have been some interesting spin-offs. Like, Sonic Spin uh, Spinball, which... Um, can add some interesting mechanics. And honestly, that game is like where I point to, to where I say, give me a good pinball spin-off that's quirky and isn't just like literally pinball. Kirby's Pinball Land, eh. I'll give it credit, they did try to make it not just a simple pinball game with things like the boss fights, but uh, just getting to those said boss fights is a pain because you're constantly climbing up a table. And if you fall, you can first fall all the way back to beginning. It's more frustrating than it is fun. Fun factor, I would be tempted to put this in F, but based on creativity, I think it's at least a D, but it's... It's not good. There are better spinoffs to play. Now, this is the first one I tried, Dream Course. Uh, I gotta say, as a single-player game, it's a D tier. It's not fun. It's tedious. It's 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 just I guess it'd be you it, you could see it as like the Sonic Spinball of golf, but the quirks just don't work well as a single player experience because you're constantly just fighting yourself in the physics. However, as a multiplayer game, you could put it in a B tier because that you can have a lot of crazy fun with a friend, and that takes a lot of the frustration away from it. But I am gonna put. So for that, I'll put it in the middle, but I'm going to say that's a bottom C. Avalanche, Puyo Puyo Tetris, this is the SNES, this is essentially the SNES version of Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, and honestly the worst of the two. The AI gets really cheap later. The story is just weird, like I can't see Kirby saying half the things he does. 
So honestly playing it's pointless, and again, I'd rather play Mean Bean Machine D tier. It's not the worst thing ever, but there's no reason to play it over actual Poyo Poyo. Uh, Dreamland 2 did improve things from Dreamland 1, but incorporating the copy abilities. I personally didn't find it as fun from Dreamland 1, but it was a more proper Kirby experience, and it wasn't as freaking short, so I would say this is a low B. It's a good improvement. It's personally, again, me saying it wasn't as fun is more of a personal thing, but objectively it is an improvement, and probably the best of the early games. And then we have Block Ball, which is more or less just Kirby Breakouts. So how much you like this game will literally be how much you like Breakout. I have Breakout's always been a bit of an okay game when I was a little kid. Something you play for like 5-10 minutes. So if like this was like a cheap eShop game, I'd be kinder to it, but like as a full price physical game, uh, I guess it's, again, it's really dependent on how much you like these arcade experiences, but it doesn't really do enough to differentiate itself from its parent like Pinball does. Uh, so D it goes, it's just not really worth playing over most Breakout. So after we got through that pile of just okayness, we're gonna get through one of my favorites. Superstar. This was, I believe I played this game after 3, and this was the first one I actually truly enjoyed. It not only does it remake most of 1 and update it, but it adds multiple new modes, several mini games, full co op, and there's also a DS upgrade which adds some new cutscenes to make the story make a bit more sense and it was add even more content. I really enjoyed this game. It's the one that got me to finally get into Kirby and see it through to its end. Not my favorite, but it's up there and definitely worth an S tier. Though I would recommend playing the DS version over the original, but that gets more personal preference. Now, Super... Oh, wait, this is Star Stacker. Well, what am I saying? Oh, boy, oh, boy. I gotta admit, I'm gonna be biased against this because I'm not too, the biggest fan of falling block Tetris-y puzzle games. But this one just left a bad taste in my mouth. It's not fun. It's ugly. It's very lacking in content. I don't know what else to say about it. It's falling block game. It's got its quirks, sure, but... Not fun, and I didn't play it for more than 10 minutes. That's an F tier. Dreamland 3. This almost killed my interest in Kirby games. Of the mainland games, I honestly feel this is the worst. A former friend of mine was a huge fan of both IT and 64, recommended them to me. And sorry, but I gotta heavily disagree with you, not that you're ever gonna watch this, but... Yeah, I just did not like it. It did, I, th I believe this was the first one to add co-op through the GUI mechanics. But even that was a bit limiting. The soundtrack was incredibly dull. The objective for getting the true ending and fi true final boss was the most tedious thing I've ever experienced. The level design isn't fun, the colors are bland. I guess through the friend mechanic was kind of interesting, but ultimately, duh. Top D, but still D. Now, Crystal Shard was the other one she recommended. I did enjoy this one quite a bit more. I don't think it's as good as people make it out to be. Mainly because you have to find all the shards to get the actual final boss, much like Kirby 3, but I will take that over Kirby 3's BS. However, some of them are put in really cheap places that are almost impossible to get to without guides and or require to have knowledge of which copy ability you need beforehand and that makes it really tedious the copy mixing ability was interesting but it was also broken because some combos were absolute garbage but other ones were ridiculously overpowered OST was still kind of lame and the visuals better than 3 but yeah I can see 
their similarities. I would put this in a B over Dreamland 2. Maybe top B. Maybe that'll stay in top B. It was good, but it wasn't great. Now uh, we have the Tilting Game. Hmm. I gotta be honest, I would recommend playing this with the ROM hack that allows you to play with conventional controls, because while the tilting... the actual tilting works okay and doesn't hinder it too much, the method of jumping, which is flicking the system up... Ah, yeah, tedious. Makes the game way more tedious than it needed to be and more frustrating than fun. And it's also just kind of a pointless game in general. Now, if you were to play it, I would definitely play it on the NSO. I have not played that particular version yet, but I'm assuming it's far easier to do that with the gyro than it is flicking the actual system. But, because the other, only other way to play it properly is with original hardware, and I mean original hardware, or by using the MGBA emulator on a Hack 3DS. Otherwise, if you don't have those things, then you'll have to play the ROM hack. Anyways, as far as ranking it... Hmm... Maybe between Kirby 3 and and uh, the Breakout one, it's 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 okay, but it's not fun. Now here's another one that got me uh, my juices flowing, if you will. Nightmare in Dreamland, the remake of this one, Kirby's Adventure. It fixes a lot, almost all the problems of the original had while maintaining its most everything about it, but I don't know, when I played this one, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Which, I couldn't explain to you why, apart from the obvious... the fact that it was smoother and far more aesthetically pleasing, why I enjoyed it as much as I did. But it replaces the original adventures in every way possible and makes it a far more enjoyable experience. You know, I would actually put that above 64. But yeah, top B for that one. Fully recommend, and I believe that's coming to the NSO as well. I think, unless it was just, uh... Hmm? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway. Then we have a couple of games that are kind of weird. This one was an e-reader game, so I never played I can't comment on it. Um, now Air Ride. Air Ride was... I have mixed feelings on this one. A lot of people like City Tour, but I hated it. For the same reasons I did not particularly like Smash Run in the 3DS version of Smash 4. It's too random and you can easily get screwed by bad rolls, or just getting the wrong event for whatever loadout you get. And the map just isn't fun to traverse. However, the actual racing modes are quite a bit of fun. Even in single player. Of course, I also like the top-down uh, maps. A lot of people didn't. I enjoyed them. I would love to be able to play this one with other people. So I'm hoping this GameCube gets added to the NSO and this game comes to it. I would say it's a solid B as well. Probably between 64 and Dreamland 2. I would definitely recommend playing it if it does come to the NSO or you play it on a hacked Wii U or an emulator or something. But again, this is also coming from the fact that I just did not like this main single player mode, which is the city. Escape or city, whatever it is. Been too long since I played it. Okay, now we have Amazing Mirror. Mm, this was an interesting game. I appreciate the fact that they kind of tried to make a bit of a Metroidvania. Unfortunately, it does have some issues. It's clearly geared for multiplayer. It's entirely playable in single player without any too much of issues, but you can see where their priorities are. Also, the map is really, really unhelpful, which adds to a lot of unnecessary backtracking or just getting lost because of how unhelpful it is. But the main game, fairly fun. Again, this is another one I'd love to play with other people, which you can now thanks to the NSO. Uh, I'm going to say this goes between Dreamland 2 and Air Ride. Another B tier, pretty good, not great. Not the greatest thing ever. Canvas Curse. A lot of people did not like this one. Mainly because it was too wonky of a spin-off and also the underwater levels SUCK. That part I will agree with, but thankfully there's not too many of them. But I actually did enjoy this one. It was kind of quirky. 
this is kind of to me it was kind of a, what a spinoff should be quirky interesting but not too detracting what kirby is and this is one of the few times where being a touch heavy game didn't bother me because like this is coming from the guy who defend motion controls but doesn't like forced touchscreen but this one worked fairly well i would say low b or top c because it again it does have quite a, a lot of issues i'm gonna say low b Okay, now we have... Ooh, I put these out of... Oh, wait, no, they're in order. Okay, so Squeak Squad. Squeak Squad was, after a couple of spinoffs, the next main Kirby game. I Well, actually, no, I think this is still technically a spinoff. This was quite a lot of fun. Uh, very fast-paced, with some new quirks. It looked good, it sounded good. It was... Quite a again, it was a joy to play, but the main thing is it's very short. I think I 100%ed this, and this is one of the few games I did 100% in about three hours. Yeah, that's not good, particularly good for uh, a full priced game, especially when it doesn't have that much replay value and it's kind of easy. If it wasn't for that, I'd put it in an A tier, but I think it's worth a high B, probably even above Return to Dreamland. Epic Yarn. This is another one recommended for me if to, as to try to get into your Kirby. Uh, get try to get into Kirby. Sorry. Oh boy. That this particular developer is interesting. I absolutely loved the Wario Land game they made. I also loved Wooly World. So they managed to make the best. Yoshi game and the best Wario Land game. But I don't know if this is some growing pains, but this one, this one didn't cut it. Like, honestly, I'd even say Crafted World was better, and Crafted World was also just okay. Epic Yarn, it felt like they were too busy trying to be stylish and cute and, um, appealing to, I guess, everybody, even though Kirby's already a fairly casual game. The fact that you can't even die, it's just, really? The only challenge is if you're trying to get the medals. Which even that's not even really required. Now, the 3DS version did add a more challenging mode, but they botched that by making this thing constantly chase you around. And they also botched it with the copy abilities, which completely changed the tone of the game. Made it more Kirby-ish, I guess, but... That version, they just... Ugh, it's either pick the too easy version or the version that's broken. In either way, I would say it's just a C tier. It's okay. I didn't particularly like it that much, but... Eh, better than Adventures. Or better than the original, anyway. Definitely better than Dream Course. Definitely, uh, it's a C tier. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people loved it, but it, sh it was just okay to me. Mass Attack. Mmm... Of the non-spin- of- of- well, actually it is a spin-off, but of the ones that are still platformers, this is one of my least favorite. Having to micromanage all them damn Kirby's is not fun. And plus this one also drags out, I guess because Squeak Squad was too short, they had to- they felt like they had to make this one a little too long. The mechanics are janky. The music sucks. The visuals suck. It's- mm. I, I would say more, but I don't want to be too spoilery on this one. It's just... It's better than Dreamland 3, but it's the D tier. I'm sorry. Oh boy, now we have Return to Dreamland, and guess what? This one is actually my favorite, so guess where it goes? Yep. And not only that, better than Superstar. I adored this game. It was good to look at. It played well. I have not played the remake, which has new content, but I was not a huge fan of making the aesthetics more closer to the last couple of Kirby games. I will pick it up eventually, but I don't want to speak too much about the remake, but just on the original, the visuals were good, the sound, the music was great, had a cute story, there were some interesting twists to the level design. There are some pretty challenging late stages. The only issue I have with this game is it was the, the one that started Kirby going into from an easy but somewhat still a little bit challenging game and do like it's a cakewalk. 
And I hate the fact that it did that, but just because how fun it was to play, I will excuse it. And even then, it's still there are still some challenging parts of the game. Now, normally I wouldn't put a compilation on one of these lists, but this one's a bit special. Not only did they put compile the games quite well, they also added a whole ton of other features. There's several episodes from the show, there's a lot of museum information on the history of the series. And not only that, they took the um, Return to Dreamland engine and mechanics and made some new challenge levels. And I actually played those before I played Return to Dreamland, so they were interesting to me. But more importantly, this is exactly how you do a compilation. Make, uh, port the games well, and then put a bunch of new content in them. Menus that are fun to navigate it. It's a far cry from the bland compilations we get these days, where they're, you, you're lucky if you even get everything in one game instead of splitting it into two, like the Legacy Collections. A tier for effort on that one even though the games are pretty hit and miss in it. Now we have Triple Deluxe, the first of the uh, 3DS games. Mm, it's pretty good. Uh, it's... The presentation isn't the greatest, the music is kind of dull, the story is kind of dumb. But, and it's also, again, another one of the easier ones. The final boss drags on way too long. But it's it's a pretty solid game. I'm gonna say this goes between S Dreamland and 64, because I think I did enjoy Dr Nightmare Bridge Dreamland over a bit more than Triple. There's some interesting new abilities put in there. It's a solid game, not the greatest, but definitely recommendable. Now we here's an interesting thing: both Roboblot and Dream uh, yeah, and uh, Triple Deluxe had a couple of their mini games turn into. Ex uh, eShop games and expanded upon. Pretty mixed results. So the first one is uh, Drum Dash, which is kind of a rhythm platformer game. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this one. It's really, really short and very basic, but it's kind of cute to play as a rhythm platformer as DDD. I'll give it a slow C. If it had more content, I'd put it higher. But again, it's 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 kind of a, an amusing, cute little game to play. And then Fighters Deluxe, basically Super Smash Brothers turned into Kirby, although it has far less um, features, obviously. But you can definitely tell that's where they got the inspiration from. Uh, playing this in single player is pretty dull. I would imagine this has been a lot of fun with friends, but unfortunately there's no online, and I don't know anybody who had the game in real life. So I only got to play the single player. It's a C game as well. Better than uh, Drum Dash and Dream Course, but you know, inferior to the main games that are in the C rank. No reason to play it though, especially now that Fighters 2 is out. Now Rainbow Curse is pretty much on par with uh, Canvas Curse. I don't like the clay aesthetics, but I do like the I do like the music, and I like the fact that they did improve some of the more tedious parts. Like the water areas are less tedious. They're still annoying, but they're less tedious. And there's some new tricks it throws at you that are kind of interesting. The big problem is, is that you play the entire game on the gamepad. Which case, why didn't they just make a 3DS game? Like, I get they needed a Kirby game for the Wii U, but this wasn't it. Like, honestly, they should have put Triple Deluxe or Robobot on the Wii U and made this a 3DS game. So I kind of have to ding it for that. It's kind of pointless to play a, a console game entirely on the gamepad when it's not going to look as good as it does on the TV. So it's better than... For that, I have to put it in the B rank, but it is better than Canvas. Um, Robobot. This is another really good one. I'm gonna say this deserves an S rank as well. And you know what? I'm gonna move Squeak Squad up to A because it was... Even though it was short, it was really fun. But anyways, about Robobot, 
I that was an interesting mechanic of essentially putting a mech into a, uh, a plat Kirby platformer, and which pretty much turned you into ultimate badass mode. Uh, yeah. I don't know where they got the eye to do that or what they were smoking when they did, but hey, it worked out. And it's honestly one of the best games in the series, and a good friend of mine absolutely loves it and says it's the best one. Don't entirely agree with that, but I agree it's a great game. Fully recommend playing that, especially for those of you who are turned off by its... The odd idea, you don't even use the robot that much, which I think is unfortunate, so you do play as regular Kirby far more, but when you do, you get that power trip. And it is quite a bit of fun, goofy story, it's good visuals, interesting music. I can't, I can't think of a single bad thing to say about it other than the fact that it's in that phase of Kirby being too easy and you don't get to use the mech as much as you should. Oh boy, now we have Kirby Clash Deluxe. This one, unlike the other eShop games, or eShop minigame spinoffs, this one was free to start, but it was very much pay to finish. The only reason I finished this game, I will say right now, is because of save data hacking. Because boy, do you have to pay some good money, or do you have to spend a lot of time grinding. And all I can think of is why. It's literally just a four-player boss rush. There's barely any story, and I'm pretty sure what it is there is not canon. It's not fun to play, it's very predatory, F tier it goes, and honestly it's worse than Star Striker. Now Blowout Blast, this one this, this one was kind of interesting because it's kind of like the first 3D Kirby game, but kind of not because it was also top down. But the movement very much was like 3D-ish. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't Forgotten Land, but it definitely had the DNA of being the first 3D Kirby game, and I had a lot of fun with it. My main issue is the fact that the levels are very bite-sized, so it ends when it starts getting fun. And it's also quite short, but it's an eShop spinoff. And also there's no copy abilities, which I think turned a lot of people off. <coughs> For what it was, however, this was a lot better than its, um... Why am I pointing at this like people are actually watching me do this? But for what it's worth, it did. This one expanded the most, I would say, off of uh, of of the game it was originally came from, because that one was more like a boss rush as well. But this one has actual proper levels in it. It probably has the most content out of all of them. And again, it's fun and it set the stage of what I think Forgotten Land turned into. So I think it's. This one is deserving of a B rank, and honestly I'd put it above Dreamland 2. Yeah, fight me on that. Now we have Fighters 2. Definitely better than Fighters 1. There's a lot there's a proper single player mode, even though it's pretty basic. And this one had online play. Unfortunately, by the time I picked it up, online was completely dead. So all I really had to do was play the single player, which again was kinda meh. And screw actually finishing it, because to properly finish it, you have to go through 100 floors of the tower, and you only get 3 lives. If you game over, you start over. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, but for if its improvements, I think it deserves at least a C. That's above its original, but still inferior to, you know, Epic Yarn Adventures. I don't really don't know what else to say about it that isn't really covered in deluxe other than it's just Kirby fighters with more f stuff in it. Ugh. And I know this one's kind of hard to see, but next we have um, Star Allies. Now everyone I knew kind of shit on this game when it first came out, and to be fair, I don't entirely blame them, because I'd probably be a an bit annoyed too if I paid $60 for this, and a good chunk of the content was held back for DLC. Or or either that or the game was rushed, and they put the cut content in as DLC. Thankfully, DLC was free, but man, the fact that they held being able to use pro the characters like DDD and Meta Knight and Magalore for your party members, 
as well as the challenge stages, which were actually pretty challenging in some areas. Just playing off that sh the rather short main game alone and being done with it, yeah, I can see a bit ticked off, especially since I think by now a lot of people were expecting something like Forgotten Lands. However, since I only paid 30 bucks for it and I did get all that DLC from the start, I enjoyed the game quite a bit. It might not have been as good as Squeak Squad, but you know what? It was a good time, and even though it was easy, very easy, apart from the challenge DLC stages, I look at that game as being kind of a power trip. Being able to take your dream team of, say, DDD, Magalore, and Meta Knight and just beat the crap out of everything. There was something satisfying about it. And playing it in four-player co-op probably would have been a lot of fun. I'll have to try and remember to get some people together to do that sometime, but... If you pass this one up, or got rid of it early on because of being launched at half a full price and half the content, I would recommend giving it another try. Okay, next we have the, uh, the Clash Deluxe. And much like the first one, free to play, free to start, predatory, however, however, this one, this one was not that bad. Like, for real. I would still say it's a D tier, bottom D, low D, how, however. Oh, you know what? I realized I screwed up. Oops. I ranked Battle Royale instead of Fighters 2. Oh, I do not feel like redoing this video, so we're going to backtrack a bit. And I'll put Fighters 2 where that was. And I'll do that after after uh, Clash. But boy, do I feel stupid. Uh, well, since, I, since I'm not since I'm not going to edit everything out like most YouTubers. And act like I'm a freaking genius that doesn't screw up. Yeah. yeah. You saw me make a huge screw up. Enjoy. Okay, so anyway, back to Clash. You do, it does have the same issues, but it does give you some uh, apples to grow your tree for free. And if you just pay like a buck or two, you can get, an, you can grow the tree enough to where you're getting enough apples where it's just a little bit of daily grinding will get you through the game without too much trouble, without spending too much time in it. Uh, I don't like the fact that you have to do that. It's still kind of predatory, but again, two or three bucks versus like 15, 20, which is what you would have to save time in the the original game. Plus there's more content, it looks better, although it does run at 30 FPS for some stupid reason, where the original ran 60. Um, I also like the fact that you can uh, get your friends, Kirby characters and classes to help you instead of just randoms. Even though it does lack online play, just the fact that you could do that is kind of cute. But this one's at least a D tier, I guess. I still wouldn't recommend playing it, but if you're going to play a Clash game, play it over the original for sure. Just be prepared to either spend a lot of time grinding or fork over like those two or three bucks to be able to finish it. Now Battle Royale, ooh, I did not like this one. It's a top-down fighting game-ish. It's definitely arena-based. I don't really know how to describe it too much. I honestly hate it. Single player is atrocious. The story is stupid. The progression sucks. The final counters are cheap. I could see it as being fun if you had some people to play co-op with, but this game is literally the Triforce Heroes of Kirby. It's absolute trash unless you play with friends. And even then, it's not particularly good. I can't think of a single way where that game could have escaped F tier. It, it was a mistake. And it doesn't even have 3D support. It only plays in 2D. And by 3D, I mean like the 3DS is 3D. Just avoid it. Next, we have the final S tier. Actually, before we talk about that, uh, we gotta talk about this. I didn't play it. I'm not paying 50 bucks to play a Fall Guys knockoff that's... It, 
it's only single player content that is playing against CPUs because the online is, from what I heard, is dead and was glitchy at launch. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not paying 15 bucks for that, and it's not even worth emulating. So, if you want opinions on that, get it from someone else, because I'm sorry, I'm not playing that. And the final S tier is... Yeah, the new one, Fallen... Forgotten Kingdom. It's not as good as Superstar, Robobot, or Return to Dreamland, but for the first attempt at a true 3D Kirby game, it's quite good. There's a lot, there's quite a bit of things to find. It's lengthy, so it lasts you a pretty good amount of time, especially if you're trying to 100% it. Boss fights are pretty interesting. It doesn't drag itself at the, out at the end like Triple Deluxe and Star Allies do. Uh, there's some new abilities that are pretty interesting. Who would have thought it would finally get Kirby with a freaking gun? Needless to say, that was my one of my most used abilities. Uh... It looks pretty good, pretty smooth, even if it is 30 FPS. Music is fairly decent. I actually played this with my fiance um, a few months back, actually probably like half a year back, after I played it by myself, playing in co-op. And we both had a lot of fun doing that. She actually enjoyed the game quite a bit as well. As for the main reason why I would put it below these three, it's probably the easiest game so far, unfortunately. It's still quite a bit of fun, but that does detract from it a bit. The only time I really found it challenging was the final boss and getting through the, like the final, um, the final, the the final Colosseum set. But you know what? It was fun enough. It was cute. I can excuse that. I fully recommend it as well. But yeah, that's my perspective on these games as a serious newcomer. Uh, agree, disagree, whatever. If you, how you feel about some of these games, I'd like to know. But I know I'm dis I know I dissent from some of my friends who have all been uh, Kirby fans since the beginnings. But some of our opinions are online. Or in line, like Superstar being really good. But yeah, I don't look fondly as some of the early ones as they do, so maybe that's why I'm a bit harsher on them. But who knows? Anyway, that's the Kirby tier list from a series newcomer. I hope y'all enjoyed.